Good afternoon. My name is Brandon Carter. I'm an application engineer with Ally PLM Solutions. I want to welcome you to the Ally PLM NX Lunch Bite series. For those of you not familiar with Lunch Bites, this is a series designed to briefly explore capabilities within NX that are often overlooked. Please check our website for upcoming Lunch Bites topics and dates. We want our lunch bites to be valuable to you, so please let us hear your suggestions on topics. And if you could send those to us via email, there's also a place on our website on our lunch bites page where you can request a topic. If you have any questions regarding today's session, please write them down and send them in an email. We have several of you on the line with us today, therefore you'll be in listen-only mode. Today's topic is on surfacing. The goal of today's session is to introduce the concept. Um, we're going to look at a high level of the general process of creating surfaces to create a solid model. We will look at a few specific tools, but we just want to look at an introduction here. So our agenda for today is what is surface modeling? We're going to look at a general surface modeling workflow, <clears throat> kind of top to bottom. And inside that workflow, we're going to look at how to create control drawings, which could be sketches, how to develop character curves, how to build surfaces in between those curves, how to edit the surfaces in those character curves, and at the end I'm going to come back and kind of talk about how to use surfaces with solids. First of all, before we get started, what is surface modeling? And before we even talk about surface modeling, let's think about what we do with solid modeling. In solid modeling we use solid features. Most of the time we're going to do some kind of operation where we add or remove material you know some kind of extrude to cut or to add material to an existing solid the models topology is driven by faces and most of the time those faces are analytic based meaning their lines or arcs are kind of prismatic in shape features faces are used for alignment as well as for mating with other features or even in the context of the assembly maybe mating parts together or components edges are rounded for safety and strength Surface modeling, we typically begin with a wireframe representation from which there we define surfaces and generate those surfaces in between those edges or curves. The model's topology is driven by edges and character curves. Surface shapes are very important, therefore direct editability of underlying curves and edges is crucial. can also be used for aesthetics, so we want to make pretty parts or consumer parts. The line there, direct editability of underlying curves is very important. Um, sometimes we say a surface is only as good as those underlying curves. So in that case, we want to be able to edit those curves to have the surface update and then any downstream um, solid modeling tools update as well. Edges and faces are mainly based on splines, both 2D and 3D splines, um, rather than analytic based lines and arcs. So the surface modeling workflow is we're going to create control drawings. These could be sketches. We're going to develop character curves or cross curves, or depending on the terminology, in between those sections and through those control drawings. Once we have the wireframe representation, we're going to build surfaces in between those curves or edges. Once we have all the faces, so to speak, filled with surfaces, or in NX we call them sheet bodies, we can sew them together and create a solid, basically a watertight, airtight boundary to be able to be a solid model. We can also then tweak and analyze and edit curves and edit the surfaces to get the desired shape. So the first piece of that are the control drawings. <clears throat> we can use sketches to control the size of your surfaces. In the screenshot below, you'll see I have three sketches set up. Um, kind of the same shape but different sizes and what I'm going to do is not only I can drive that to change the shape of my surface but I can also create what I'm calling character curves in between those sketches so those points will locate the endpoints of the curves and we can use those sketches to drive the shape of the model. <coughs> character curves are, can be connected in this case between the cross sections or like I have specifically here the sketches. Example curve commands may be the studio spline, bridge curve, law curve, being able to project a curve, composite curve. 
uh, to build those in between, in this case, the control drawings. We'll look at a more specific example later, um, but just to give you an idea of the types of curves we're looking at. Keep in mind, sketches can also be used to define character. Notice I put character in quotes. Character means I'm just defining character as a way to edit and control the shape of your surfaces and therefore the model. One of the big things we want to talk about, or at least mention in this presentation, is curvature um, continuity. So we have G0, G1, and G2. You probably, if you've done any Class A surfacing or you work in this environment, you probably live um, with these curvature continuous tools. So G0 is just coincident, meaning that the curves are together, connected, or even a surface is connected. G1 is tangent, so it means that at the point where they're connected, they apply a tangency. And curvature continuous is not only tangent, but it has the same radius at the connecting point between the curves. So down on the bottom right, you see, and we'll look at this example later, you see we have a rectangle, which is kind of my control drawing, and I've created a spline through the endpoint, the midpoint, and the endpoint. At those endpoints, you'll see that I can infer G1, which is tangency, so it'll be tangent as it approaches that point to, in this case, the bottom line, the same thing with the top line. So that's just by right-clicking and inferring that continuity. Once we have our wireframe representation, we can now build surfaces in between them. And depending on your NX license, you may have different choices for surfacing tools. Um, you may have some what we call higher end surfacing tools to have some better options or more flexible options to create certain types of surfaces. Some of the tools we're going to look at are, in this example is through curves, through curves mesh, a studio surface, an insided surface, which is sometimes referred to as an insided patch, and maybe even a styled sweep. So we're going to take a look at a few of these tools as we go through today's presentation. Once we have all those surfaces connected and watertight or airtight, so to speak, we can sew them all together, and now the model will become a solid. Once it's a solid, we can do solid modeling techniques to it, meaning do edge blends and shell out um, the body and tools like that. Another thing we could do with the second bullet point is you'll notice that I actually left the faces on each end open. I did not build a surface in there, so it's kind of have a surface, you know, of the four faces around, and I could use the thicken command to add a material thickness to these surfaces or sheet bodies. Therefore, it would become a solid. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the example that I've shown you in the slides, and after that, we're going to do another example with this remote control helicopter you see on the screen. Alright, so let's come over to NX and here is the first example we're looking at. You'll notice I have what I was calling these control drawings. I have the first sketch. I have this sketch 4 in front which is on an offset plane and then I have sketch 6 in the back which is another offset plane. You notice it's larger. In size. The sketch 4, the one towards the front, is actually an associative copy of sketch 1 in the middle. So if I change sketch 1, sketch 4 will change to be the same as well, just to show some different design intent. So these are going to be our control drawings. The first thing we want to do is build these character curves I was mentioning. So I'm just going to go to insert curve in the studio spline, and I'm just going to start connecting between the cross sections of my control drawings or my my sections if you will so you'll notice that I do get options for certain um, control with curvature continuous and tangent and so forth I'm just gonna go ahead and connect those points for now I'm gonna do the same thing repeat and you see basically I'm creating a wireframe representation as we proceed from one cross section to another The more cross curves, which is what I'm going to call these guys, that you have, the more control you have over the surface. So basically I have a wireframe representation. Let me go ahead and hide the datum planes for 
I just did a control W that does a show and hide. So basically I have a wireframe representation. So the next thing we had our control drawings which were the sketches. We have our um, splines which I'm considering the character curves. Now we're going to build surfaces in between them. So let's go ahead and start off and let's do a studio surface. So notice it starts with sections then we're going to apply guide curves. First I'm going to start with section and notice I'm going to pick on this side of the sketch. It doesn't really matter, matter which side I start when picking the section. I'm going to go ahead and add a new set which will be a new section but here it does matter. I want to make sure that I pick the same side as the second sketch as I did the first because I want kind of that linear transition. So you'll notice as I start chasing the curves and adding them to that section it starts to preview the surface. And let's go ahead and do the same thing with the final cross section. Now I could come in here and add guide curves. We'll talk a little bit about that later. So I just basically went from section to section to section. Now I have some open ends for my surfaces. Now whenever I create certain surfaces, the one I want to use, the tool I want to use in this case is actually the insided surface. Sometimes you might have heard this referred to as an insided patch. I want to come in and I'm going to use quick pick to make sure I grab the edge of the existing surface not necessarily the sketch line. So I'm going to grab the edges of the surface, the edge of the studio surface. And notice once I get two lines it starts to preview and then I'm going to finish it off with that sketch line. Underneath settings I can go ahead and trim the boundary. So notice how we close that in. A little bit later when we do the helicopter example, I'll show you some other options with insided surface. This is just trying to illustrate the top to bottom workflow. I'm going to go ahead and hide those sketches in curves for now, just so that way I can just pick those edges directly when I create these insided patches. And actually I take that back. I do need my sketches to close off the uh, boundary there. So here I'm just, this is the view toolbar. You can customize this. I'm using NX 8.5. This was a new enhancement with 8.5. Like I said, it's called the view toolbar. So I'm just going to grab insided surface from there. And I'm going to make sure I grab the edge of the studio spline. And chase that all the way around and close the boundary. It's got trim already on. So there's the surface there. Now here I'm going to go ahead and hide my sketches and I'm just going to that way I can easily pick up the edges of the surface. So let's go back to another insided surface. Then I can easily grab those edges of the existing surfaces. Now to make this a solid I need to sew all these surfaces together. Right now they are what we call sheet bodies. So you see the different surfaces are continuous sheet bodies. So I'm going to go up and underneath combine where my boolean tools are. I'm going to go to sew. And notice the same target tool idea that we have with our boolean tools or unite and subtract. And notice here briefly it says solid body created. So if I change my filter to solid body you'll see that it does pick up as a solid. So because that's why airtight and we stitched it all together or sewn it all together it's now a solid body. Now if I come back in here and I edit this sketch. Before we do that, let's go ahead, because it's a solid body, let's go ahead and create some maybe some edge blends to these four edges, showing once again that it is a solid body. And maybe we need to shell this out. So I'm going to shell this out and leave both ends open to complete our model. Now if I go back to that first sketch and edit that sketch, I'm going to drive that control drawing Maybe I want to shrink that to 3 inches, change the width of this down to 8. And if you'll remember, I mentioned that the front sketch is actually the same size. So notice how the front of it got smaller too. Everything updated, obviously the surfaces as it went through those cross sections, um, changed shape. And then the insided patches and all the tools that happened later in the history tree and the part navigator also updated. Now I also mentioned if I switch over to another part, here I just have the studio surface like we created and then I did a patch on the bottom but the ends are open. So I could also do something like a thicken command and apply a thickness to these faces 
and you'll see that that turns it into a solid model. So if I hide the sheet bodies, now I'm left with a solid and we could do some modeling operations there. So there are different ways of getting a solid body from surfaces. The first method was kind of that top to bottom, make sure it's watertight, sew it all together, and then it can became a, become a solid body. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to this uh, helicopter example. And we're going to work on this body demo part, which is actually a blank part. So we're actually going to be modeling in the context of the assembly, kind of doing a top-down approach. I'm going to hit F8 on the keyboard just to square that up normal. That's a nice little tip and trick. You can rotate your model closely to the orientation. Hit F8, it'll square up to the screen. Now here, this is actually a blank part. What we're going to be modeling is actually the body of this helicopter. So to get us started, I didn't talk about this yet, but I could use some visualization tools like a raster image. So maybe I have some kind of hand sketch, an image of the part, or even um, a PDF of it that I could trace and I can actually put that image in there and move it around. So what I'm going to do in this case, I already have background and components close. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of eye that up and make sure that this piece is somewhere in the tail of the drawing. I probably want to go ahead and throw that on the proper layer to keep up with our layer standards at work. And this is going to give me the opportunity to kind of trace and draw geometry very close, kind of freehand if you will, um, within an X. So I'm going to go ahead and create a studio spline. I'm going to hold down Alt so I don't snap to any key points. So once I hold down Alt, I can start clicking and kind of tracing over these edges to create the rough shape. You'll notice we also have analysis tools so we can look at the curvature by turning on curvature combs. So I'm just going to kind of line that up a little better. I can turn off the display. So there's our first character curve. I'm going to come around the bottom, kind of trace around the bottom to create my next representation. And then the final curve we're going to use on the tail of this. So there's my final curve. So we got those character curves. The next thing I need to do is create a cross section. So I'm just going to create a sketch on a path and I'm going to use that top guide curve or character curve um, for my location. And I want to create some construction points. So if I go to intersection point, I can say where does that curve intersect the plane? So I'll create a couple of intersection points. And then I'm going to use a rectangle as my control drawing. So I'm going to use those intersection points to locate it. I'm going to come up and grab the 2D studio spline. And I'm going to grab the end point to the midpoint, back to the end point. And at those end points, this is where I can infer tangency, G1 continuity. Okay, So this rectangle can then drive the overall, in this case, width and shape of my rectangle. I'm going to go ahead and make this rectangle reference or construction. And there is our cross section for our first surfacing command. So I'm going to come up here and do a styled sweep. I have two guide curves, so I'm going to select my guide curves. I'm going to use this as a section and you use each of those as guide curves. So it's going to preview the surface. Notice it previews it the entire length of those guide curves. With just a couple options, I can actually come in here and change this to make normal and notice how it'll stop where the shortest guide curve is. I can also give it some more shape control. I could trim it off, but inside of here you have the options for partial sweep. So I can actually pull that back so it doesn't go the entire length of the curve. I want to go ahead and turn off the display of that raster image. And here I want to build a nice tangent bridge curve in between these two lower character curves. So the first thing I'm going to do is give me a little room. I'm going to go to Edit Curve and do an Edit Length basically. So I'm going to edit this curve and I'm going to pull this down 
to give me some room. What that allows me to do is then come in here and do an insert from curves, or curve from curves, I should say, and bridge between this curve and this curve. You'll notice there's blue vectors that I can control the tangency off in each direction. There's also little slider bars to do the same, which is doing the same thing as the arrows. If I know what kind of tangent magnitude I want, I can type in the value. So it created a nice curvature, in this case tangency, between those two curves. The next thing I want to do is I want to create a spline out to the side to kind of give the front of the helicopter its shape. So I'm going to go back to Studio Spline. I'm going to actually start with an intersection up here to connect. And I want to connect it to the surface. And whenever I connect it to the surface, I can infer G1 for tangency. I can then move that up to the edge, but remember it's actually tangent to the face, which is nice. I can also come up here and in the U direction, I can make that halfway around that cross section, around that surface in this case. I forgot to add another point, so I'll go back in there to the spline command and edit that spline, and I'm going to put another point and move it straight out, in this case horizontally, to kind of give it that bowed shape. Now before I actually build the surface from top to bottom, and really what I should say is from the nose back to the tail using the top and bottom as guide curves, I want to build some extruded surfaces as construction. So I'm turned on the stop at intersection and I'm going to extrude some little construction surfaces back to the left. Now you'll notice that I have the opening to the right. What I'm going to do with these extruded surfaces is it's going to give me a face or surface reference to build my tangency or curvature continuous or whatever I want there. So let's go ahead and build the surface. So I'm going to use mesh surface through curve mesh. This one's asking for a curve or point for a primary curve. So I can actually come up here and specify a point with this example. Then I'm going to go back and run it back to the edge of that styled sweep. Then for cross curves, I want to use the edge of the extruded surface, not the spline, because that's how I'm going to reference it. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. And as soon as I have two cross curves, notice how it went from point to the styled sweep from this cross curve to the bottom cross curve. Well, you'll see that I forgot to add the one that's actually given its shape on the side. So I'm going to add a new set. Now, if I look at the list, you'll see cross curve one, cross curve two at the bottom, and then a new one, which I'm going to define. Well, there is an order associated with that. So it's going to, I want it to go from curve one to the new curve to curve two. So new is active. I'm going to grab that curve. So notice how it transitions through those curves to give me the shape I want. Now you may still be asking why did I create those extruded surfaces, and this is why. Because here I can specify my continuity. So my first primary is the point. I can leave that just coincident or connected. My last primary, I want to change it to tangent, and it's going to allow me to select the face of that styled sweep to apply tangent, to give me a nice smooth tangent transition from surface to surface. I'm going to do the same thing with those extruded surfaces I created as construction. And finally, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to change that to tangent as well. And you'll notice that the front down towards the bottom, it actually comes in with a nice tangent um, situation and connection to that extruded surface. So there's our surface. So I'm going to go ahead and hide those extruded surfaces as construction. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and hide some curves. Before I hide the curves, actually, if I come back and edit this side spline, and pull that out a little farther, that's going to update the shape of my surface as we would expect. So let me go ahead and hide the curves and the sketches just to clean up my display a little bit. And a lot of times with surfacing or industrial designers, we're going to work with symmetry, meaning we're going to model, in this case, this side and mirror it about a center reference plane. So a tool that a lot of industrial designers like to use 
is this mirror display. So I'm going to set my mirror plane and then if I go back and turn on the mirror display it's not actually mirroring as a modeling feature like a mirror feature command it's just showing me the result I'm going to get once I mirror it. So it's giving me the the upright display of it. I'm going to turn off that mirror and what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and mirror the feature. Let me turn off the display. I didn't do that yet. So now I do want to mirror those features. So I'm going to come up and just do a mirror feature, grab both surfaces, and mirror it about the center plane. Right now it's several different sheet bodies for surfaces, so I'm going to come up and sew those together. So I'm going to combine them, sew like we talked about earlier, I'm window select all the other tool surfaces, so now it's one sheet body. Now on the back you see it's open and like I said my goal is to get a 3D solid. So we're going to come back to inside its surface and I'm going to change it to uh, the Y direction and what you're going to notice is I can adjust the center control. So notice as I pull that forward I can adjust the curvature, the center control with that surface just by dragging it. I can also come down here and once again trim the boundary. So now we've closed that in and gave us a nice rounded shape with just a simple tool. Okay, the final thing I want to do is I want to look at the front. I have a very sharp point and I want to give it kind of a nose. So I'm going to go back and create another spline. I can adjust the shape of that by dragging that around. So there I've just created kind of a spline through there. So I can use a tool called Trim Sheet. I'm going to grab the body. I'm going to give it a vector direction for how I want to trim it. I'm going to do it out to the side and pick that curve to trim it. So notice it's basically giving me a little cut out there in the front. Once I have that I can go ahead and do another bridge curve. and bridge it between those seams. Gives me a nice shape. Now the nice thing is I can go back to that insided patch like we saw earlier. And with the area option you can actually specify interior curves. And I forgot to turn on the uh, trim boundary so I'll go back in there and go ahead and trim the boundary and notice the result I get. I get that nice little shape nose. So now to create a solid I'm going to come back and sew everything together now including those last two surfaces. Now it says solid body created. If I change my selection filter to solid body you see that that's now a solid body. So I could do things like edge blends on the end of that and finish some modeling operations. The final result of this looks something like this. You see that we've added the wings and did a Boolean Unite, united those in there, and finished off the shape of the helicopter. The last thing we want to take a look at is using surfaces with solids. So, when sometimes we think about surfacing, we think about that bottom up approach meaning doing all of it as surfaces to make it a solid. Sew it together and make it a solid. If we need to make a contoured shape of an existing solid body we can create a surface or a sheet body on top of the solid and then maybe use one of the following tools like replace face or a trim body or emboss body to add it to the design. So basically what we're looking at here I have a, a shape. This is actually a solid body. It's actually an imported body. You see the body one. I've done some delete face operations to kind of change the shape. And I've also built two sketches. I have this spline and then this arc. And I built a studio surface between those like we looked at earlier. So one of the first tools we want to look at is maybe like a replace face. So I'm going to grab kind of the top faces even down here inside of these valleys. And I'm going to replace all those faces with the surface. If I go ahead and hide the surface, you see the result I get. 
if I come in here and edit this sketch, maybe raise that up a little bit. That's changing my sketch, which is going to update my surface, and then the replace face is obviously updating. I could do something else like doing a trim body. Maybe I want to trim the front of this off. I'm going to use a spline. Create some kind of spline like this. We're going to go ahead and extrude the um, surface all the way through. In this case, the extruded sheet body. And I can do something as simple as using a trim command. We're going to just do a trim body. Trim that body with that surface. And you'll see the result I get. So just to kind of put it in the back of your mind that we can combine solids with surfaces as construction and do some of these tools like replace face, trim body, and so forth. So to wrap up, as always, our Ally PLM Lunch Bites, uh, the replays are on our website at www.allypeelum.com. You see our upcoming Lunch Bites um, topics and dates underneath resources on our Lunch Bites page. You can catch the replays of Lunch Bites there. You can also, you see down at the bottom, you can suggest a topic for next Lunch Bites like we mentioned earlier. There's my contact information. Also, just to uh, be aware, there are upcoming training offerings, the Essentials for Next Designers, five days for new users. This is for CAD. Um, you see the next couple dates. Also, NX Cam Fundamentals is in full swing. So you see the upcoming dates for those. All of our classes can be taught online. Remember that. And if you need more information, check out our website. So I appreciate your attention this afternoon. I hope you found this session informative. If you have any suggestions or questions, please email them to us. Um, I appreciate your time and have a great afternoon.